Hi, I'm Chris Wardlaw for Car Gurus, and this is the redesigned 2018 Audi A5 in Sportback format. For the uninitiated, the A5 is based on the A4 sedan, and it's sold as a coupe, as a convertible, and as this new variant, which is called the Sportback. The A5 isn't exactly the same as the A4, but it is quite similar. The A5 costs more too, to the tune of about $1,900. Of the three available body styles, the Sportback is the most affordable version of the A5, a five-door hatchback offering greater cargo space and utility than the A4. Is it worth the extra money? Let's go for a drive and discuss. If you've seen my review of the redesigned 2017 Audi A4 on CarGurus, you know that I absolutely love just about everything about it. And that adoration applies also to the new A5 Sportback. It looks special. And when you get inside of it, you feel special, like somebody thoughtful has anticipated your every need and knows exactly what you like. And I'm not even reviewing the top of the line prestige trim level. This is the mid-grade premium plus, equipped with metallic paint, wood trim, 19 inch wheels, a navigation package, and a Bang & Olufsen sound system. But even with all that stuff, the price tag only comes to $52,100. And all it's really lacking to achieve perfection is the warm weather package, which would install a set of ventilated sport bolstered front seats, and that would add about 1,300 bucks to the price tag. Now don't get me wrong, these standard seats are really comfortable, but it's been pretty muggy the past week, and in my part of Los Angeles, it's been almost 100 degrees every day, and seat ventilation sure would have been nice this week. Also, while flinging this car down some of my favorite mountain roads, the standard driver's seat did not do a very good job of holding me in place, but when you're not exploring the A5 Sportback's limits of adhesion, the seat's quite comfortable, the steering wheel's pleasing to hold, and this adjustable center armrest helps to perfect your driving position. You face a gorgeously rendered dashboard that exudes attention to detail. The latest version of Audi's multimedia interface infotainment system is easier than ever to use, and the available Audi virtual cockpit instrumentation is sensational. There are a few quirks to the controls. This shifter takes getting used to, an observation I noted about last year's A4 sedan. Also, it takes some memorization before you can operate the center console controls purely by touch. Otherwise, it doesn't take a lot of effort to figure out how to use the A5's instruments and controls. Rear seat room is cramped, feeling more confining than the A4 sedan. Once you're inside the car, which sits quite low to the ground, you're happy enough, especially because there's a triple zone climate control system as standard equipment. But getting in and getting out is not easy thanks to the rakish roofline, especially if you're a bigger person like me. Of course, the A5 Sportback's sleek appearance is just one benefit of this design approach. The other is extra cargo space and utility. At first, the cargo space doesn't look all that large, but its useful shape helps you to maximize its potential. Audi says it holds 21.8 cubic feet of cargo, and with the rear seat folded down, it provides a maximum of 35 cubic feet of space. Now, in a couple of days, my family and I are heading to the airport in this car, and just to make sure it will accommodate all of our luggage, I loaded two full-size suitcases, a rollerboard, two kid-size suitcases, my overstuffed camera and laptop backpack, and two kid-size backpacks into the trunk. And it all fit with no problem. But you want to know what doesn't fit in the trunk? A compact folding stroller. You can't put it in wheels first, and you can't put it side to side. Won't go. As far as technology is concerned, the A5 is equipped with the usual suspects for a luxury car, and they're either standard or optional. Among them, four features call special attention to themselves. The first is Audi Virtual Cockpit, which is a digital instrumentation screen with some really slick features. You can enjoy a more traditional gauge cluster, or you can shrink the gauges and cycle through the driver information system's various screens. By far, my favorite thing is the navigation map display. It features Google Earth imagery, it shows real-time traffic, and it gives the cabin significant wow factor. If you get the prestige trim level, the A5 has a head-up display. Now, my test car doesn't have this particular feature, but it projects your navigation route right onto the windshield, and in complex intersections, it'll show you exactly the path that you need to follow. It also shows current speed and the speed limit on the road you're traveling. Audi's multimedia interface infotainment system offers handwriting recognition technology now, and that allows the driver to input information using a fingertip on the main MMI controller. 
Now, it's fairly easy to use, but personally, I don't get the appeal of this. I mean, why not just use the voice recognition system? Vehicle exit assist is also on my test car, and this is useful for people who need to parallel park on a busy street. And what it does is it will warn the front occupants not to open their door when it detects an approaching vehicle or a person on a bicycle. Finally, the optional 19-inch speaker Bang & Olufsen sound system deserves special mention. It sounds terrific, it's standard with prestige trim, and it's available on the Premium Plus model for just $950. I highly recommend it. There are two versions of the A5 Sportback from which you can choose. This one, the A5, has a turbocharged 2-liter 4-cylinder engine. The other one, which is called the S5, has a turbocharged 3-liter V6 engine. If maximum acceleration and handling is important to you, then you should get the S5. But that's not to say that the A5 won't thrill you, because aside from a small delay in off-the-line response, my test car drives like a guided missile. And yes, that is the exact same thing that occurred to me when I was driving the A4 about this time last year. The turbocharged 2.0-liter generates 252 horsepower between 5,000 and 6,000 RPM, and it whips up 273 pound-feet of torque between 1,600 and 4,500 RPM. Now what that means is that basically across nearly the entire rev range, the engine's either making maximum torque or maximum horsepower, and the result of that is speed. Audi claims that 60 miles an hour will arrive in 5.7 seconds, the same as the A4 sedan, despite the Sportback's extra 122 pounds of weight. Audi's 7-speed dual-clutch automated manual transmission distributes the power, and every A5 is equipped with standard Quattro all-wheel drive. Paddle shifters come in handy when you're really hustling the car, which is likely going to be most of the time. My test vehicle also has an optional set of 19-inch wheels that includes uh, two 55, 35 R19 summer performance tires and a sport tuned suspension. As you might imagine, grip is extraordinary, but my test car is lacking the optional adaptive damping suspension that came on the A4 sedan that I evaluated last year. That omission, combined with the Sportback's extra weight, the larger wheels, the lower profile tires, the stiffer suspension, and maybe even the hatchback body style, produced subtle but discernible differences in the ride and handling. For example, more suspension noise than I remember from the A4 made its way into the A5's cabin, as well as more impact harshness and road noise. I also thought that the A5 Sportback displayed a little bit more body motion when you're going around high-speed curves with undulating pavement. But none of these traits are cause for concern. As I said, the differences are very minor, and both the A4 and the A5 are a blast to drive. As was true last year of the A4, high summer heat did not phase this A5's brakes, and by toggling the drive mode select switch, you can adjust drivetrain response and steering effort levels. Always fun, never boring, the A5 Sportback exceeds dynamic expectations. Whether you're loafing along on the freeway, slicing and dicing past slower vehicles driven by people who either don't know or don't care what the left lane is supposed to be used for, when you're diving around city corners, when you're blazing down canyon roads, when you're trying to get by guys in Kia Souls with surfboards on the top of the roof, this car is engineered to entertain. As proof, I'm sorry to report that the car returned no better than 22.5 miles per gallon on my test loop, and that came in much lower than the EPA's rating of 27 miles per gallon. Yeah, that's probably my fault. At the start of this review, I wondered if the A5 Sportback is worth the price premium over the A4 sedan. The rakishly handsome good looks and the added utility are undeniably appealing. The less comfortable rear seat and the higher sticker price, not so much. Basically, the choice between the two comes down to your personal preferences and requirements. In terms of where the A5 Sportback fits into the broader luxury car segment, its only competitors are the BMW 4 Series Grand Coupe and, believe it or not, the upcoming Buick Regal GS and Kia Stinger. The BMW is no slouch, and while the verdict is still out on the Buick and Kia, which will no doubt provide compelling value, neither of those brands resonates with luxury buyers quite like an Audi does. Regardless of how things shake out, know that the A5 Sportback is an absolutely terrific car that sets a high bar for its competition. You're unlikely to regret buying one. Be sure to check out my full review of the A5 Sportback on cargurus.com, and if you found this review helpful, please share this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. For all of us here at Cargurus, thank you for watching.